Yo, what's good everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to improve your counter melodies, you know, how to make better melodies on top of chords. And I'm basically gonna talk about how to use color notes to make your melodies more interesting, you know, and make them flow better. But yeah, make sure to pay close attention, you know, take some notes because you might turn into Mozart after watching this video. And as always, before we get started, you already know, go tap in with me on social media at Enviral, but let's lock in. This video is gonna be a little different than my usual videos because, you know, we're not making a beat, but I'm still gonna spill some major sauce. So we're gonna start in the scale of C major. So in C major, these are our chords. And we're just building a chord on top of like every starting note of the scale. Let's put down a super simple chord progression. So I'm just starting in C major, you know, going to F major, A minor, and then G major. So the first thing that you should consider when making a top melody for these chords is that the melody should highlight some of the notes that are in the chord. So on our first C major chord, we have these notes, but I'm just playing an open voicing of it. So for the C major, I could play these notes, which are already in the chord. And then for the F major, I could play all the notes in the F major chord. A minor, I could play the same notes in the chord. You know, you're not adding anything on top of the chords. It's kind of like, it sounds very bland. So uh, that's where color notes come in. And basically color notes are any note that is not technically part of the chord, but is like an addition to the chords. In the C major chord, you know, the D is a color note and then the F is a color note. Same with the A and then the B also. Cause these notes, see like they're not in the chord, but if I play the chord and I play the color notes, you can see it doesn't sound good at all. That's because you want to use these color notes as a transition. So what I mean by that is like, let's say I want my melody to go something like this. Just go down from this G to an E. Then to make that more interesting, I could, you know, use these color notes to make it a transition. So I could do something like this. So I'm gonna play this chord progression again, and instead of playing the regular notes of the chords, I'm gonna play color notes and stuff just to transition around and try to get like a melody going. L let's actually try to play a super simple melody. I'm just gonna try to play these two notes. The reason this sounds really good is because I'm playing a really colorful note. So for the C major chord, this D is actually the nine of the chord. It's an extension of the chord. And then for the F major, this is like the six of the chord. And then it goes to the seven. So these notes are not in the chord, but that's why it adds color because you're adding something on top of the chord that's not already there. A really easy way to incorporate this is like if you're playing a simple chord, let's say like C major, and you want your top melody to play any of these notes, you know, start with a note that's a color note like below it. So like, or above it. You could even just play one note and switch up the chords underneath it and get really cool melodies. So like, so in my first chord, this G is my fifth of the chord, but in my F major, it's the nine of the chord. And then in my A minor, it's my uh, seven of the chord. You know, you should think of notes in the scale as like having different jobs depending on what chord is playing underneath it. So like this note, is gonna sound different if I have a C major underneath it than if I have like a F major. Or a D minor or a A minor. So this G is a color note for my F minor because it's playing the nine of the chord, you know, seven, nine, but it's just like a fifth of the C major. So it's not adding anything on top of the C major chord, but it's adding really cool color on top of the F major. Or like in D minor, it's the four of the chord. So it adds a more harsh feeling, but like in C major, 
it's a really stable kind of note that's something you should really start thinking about when you're making melodies like what job does this note serve on top of the chord so you know some notes sound stable on top of a chord so like in c major these notes sound stable but, but other notes sound more colorful and less stable So now we have a basic understanding of what color notes are and then what stable notes are. But then the question is like, how do you combine that to make a cool melody? The simple answer is you have to use both equally and it depends kind of what like sound you're going for. So if I want a really dreamy melody, I would probably play a melody that's really colorful and doesn't resolve like for a while. I played a lot of notes that kind of build tension. So in any scale, the first note is the most stable. So in our case, C is the most stable note. So because it is the root of the scale. So the C major chord is the home chord. And then, and then the second strongest note is our fifth, which is, you know, the G five notes away. And then the chord is G major. And this is called the dominant because it transitions very well to the C major again. And then third, you have your fourth, which is the F, and then this is the subdominant. The reason I'm telling you guys that is because these notes are generally very strong. You know, your C, F, G. So the one, four, and five, you know, your C, F, and G are very stable and strong notes. But then the other notes, you know, the two, three, six and seven are these are less stable notes and you can think of them as like transition notes in a sense if i want a super strong sounding melody obviously you know i would utilize the five and then the one because these are the strongest notes for example as you can see that sounds like some march or whatever this also applies to any minor scale you know if i'm in c minor you know, my four and five and one are the same. So if I want a really strong sounding melody, I would probably play something with the five in it. You know, that's just a little example, but, but you know, only using these notes makes the melody really boring and it sounds like some 1400 shit. So if you want to juice it up, you know, you got to use the other notes that are less stable but colorful so as i said you know these notes are less stable especially the seventh because this is the least stable note it really wants to go up to the c again you know same with some of these other notes you know if you're playing an f over c this really wants to either go down or up even if you're playing a d This means these notes are really good transition notes, so you can use them to just kind of go up and down the scale. You know, once again, a really good way to build tension is just to play a color note and then resolve it to a note in the chord. like that's pretty much the main concepts on how to make a strong melody it's always good to start thinking about you know what purpose a note serves on top of a chord and why it sounds the way it does what sound you can achieve by playing a certain note versus another note but but at the end of the day everything i talked about in this video is not really a rule but just a guideline to you know help you understand why melodies work the way they do it's always way more important to use your ear and do whatever sounds good or whatever sounds creative to you but also thinking about and understanding this concept will definitely help you improve your ear but yeah i hope this video was helpful for you guys i know it's probably a little confusing if you're a beginner to music theory but you know just try to mess around with your piano or inside fl studio um and also if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like and if you guys want me to drop more videos like this let me know in the comments and yeah i'll see you guys later and peace out